smell the roses may be cliche, but new research suggests that it's great advice for finding satisfaction in life. New research also suggests that paying attention to the meaningful things and people in your life may play a larger role in your overall happiness. So don't just stop and smell the roses. Stop and eat the roses. Well, not literally eat the roses from the floral department in the supermarket while you're shopping for food. Today, we'll show you how to make a luscious, beautiful, lovely, edible flower dessert because flowers aren't just pretty to look at. They're pretty fabulous in your desserts too. Aloha, I'm Valerie Joseph with Fashion Sense, reselling runway looks to the walkways of Hawaii and providing smart solutions to all your fashion needs. Today we're making a beautiful, gorgeous, pretty, edible flower garden dessert. For this recipe, what you'll need are some edible flowers. Make sure the flowers that you're getting are certified organic and edible. And I picked these up from a local farm. You'll also need a package of clear gelatin two tablespoons of sugar. I like to use monk fruit as a sugar substitute. Monk fruit was used for centuries in Eastern traditional herbalism to increase chi and well-being, thus earning its nickname, the immortal's fruit. It has just as much punch as regular sugar. Monk fruit is also zero calorie, zero glycemic, very healthy and it has just as much punch as sugar. I'm also going to be making this lovely dessert in a little, cute little silicone sphere mode. And we're gonna need some boiling water for this as well. So let's get started. So we're gonna measure half a cup of boiling water here. We're going to mix our one packet of unflavored clear gelatin, two tablespoons of monk fruit. Add your boiling water. Once you have it completely dissolved, we're gonna set it aside to cool. While we're setting that aside and waiting for that to cool, we're going to stuff our silicone sphere mode with some edible flowers. And here is where you can take some flowers and have fun with it. I would place some down, place some up. You never know how they're going to shift once you add the gelatin in. But look how gorgeous they're coming out. Just have some fun with it going to be so beautiful and just stuff it with all these beautiful edible flowers look how pretty it's like a little garden in the little sphere I mean it's so pretty I want to eat it just right now edible garden dessert so fun to make so I like a ton of flowers because I want to see the flowers from every angle so go ahead and don't be shy use up all the blooms so we've stuffed our sphere mode with these edible flowers. So pretty, look at them. I love all the color combinations. It's just so happy to look at. Makes me happy. We're gonna lock in the mode here and then we're going to fill the sphere with the gelatin. I like to use a cup that has a little spout here because it's easier for me to pour so I'm just gonna transfer that into here, like that. And then I'm going to carefully fill each sphere with the gelatin. 
and just go really slowly because you can't really tell when it's full. Just keep an eye on it. Okay, so once you have them all filled, we're gonna put this into the refrigerator to firm. So while we're waiting for those beauties to chill out, let's make some edible flour ice cubes. These will make great additions to your iced tea, your mocktails, will even add a bit of punch to a simple glass of water. So for this, you wanna use the really large blossoms so you can see the flowers from every angle. We're also going to use a silicone ice cube tray. I find it easier to pop out the ice cubes when they're frozen in a silicone tray. And we're also going to use distilled water versus regular water. Regular water tends to get cloudy when you make ice cubes. So we're going to use distilled water and we're gonna boil that so that our ice cubes are much more clear and you can see all the pretty blossoms from all different angles. So you want to use the bigger blossoms to stuff the ice cube tray with because you want to be able to see your flowers from all angles. So go ahead and make sure that you're stuffing your flowers, face some downwards, face some upwards because you never know how they're going to shift when they freeze. And you wanna make sure that you see all these beautiful flowers from all angles. Look how pretty they are. It's like a little garden. It's like planting a garden. Oh, it's gonna look so great in the refreshing drink that we're gonna make later. I love all the colors. I especially love the bright colors against this blue silicone tray. So now that we've made our beautiful flower garden in our silicone ice cube tray, Let's boil some distilled water. Now, the reason why you wanna use distilled water versus regular water, regular water tends to get cloudy when you make ice cubes, whereas distilled water will create a more clear ice cube so that you can see all the beautiful flowers and you wanna see that, trust me, you wanna see that flower garden party in your ice cubes. So after we've boiled some distilled water, we're going to fill our ice cube tray. Oh, it's like watering your garden. It's so fun. I can't wait till these freeze up. I can't wait to place them in the refreshing drink that we're gonna make later. It's going to be beautiful. So after we filled the garden party ice cube tray with distilled water, we're gonna set them in the freezer to chill. So we've got our jello shots chilling and our garden party ice cubes freezing. When we come back, we'll make a mocktail that'll pair wonderful with all of this. Stay with us. So we're going to make a floral ginger rolls mocktail. Oh, I can't wait. You're gonna love this. It's so pretty and it's so refreshing. You're going to need eight ounces of rose syrup. So we'll just pour that into the cup here. And I love the cups with the spout because it's easy to pour less mess. Add in a cute little jug here. And this is making four recipes. 
eight ounces of rose syrup. We're gonna add four ounces of freshly squeezed lemon juice. I'm gonna cut a few of these lemons here. So we're gonna need four ounces of freshly squeezed lemon juice here. Oh, this is getting my forearm workout. Whoa! Yes! Four ounces of lemon juice. I'm gonna add that here. And then we're gonna add four ounces of ginger juice. Now, if you don't have ginger juice, I'm just gonna shake this up. If you don't have ginger juice, you can substitute this for ginger ale or club soda. So we're gonna add four ounces. Ooh, and this is gonna add a really lovely spice to our drink. Mmm. Add that here. Ooh. So we've made our floral ginger rose mocktail. But before we serve that up, if you're going to use roses, real roses in your mocktail or in any dish, make sure they're edible and they're organic. Even though they are organic, it doesn't hurt to make sure that they're pesticide free. And you can easily do that with a mixture of two tablespoons of baking soda and one tablespoon of lemon juice. Mix it together, spray the lovely petals, leave them out to dry before you use them in your drink or in any edible dish. Now, it's time to serve up our mocktail. I'm gonna grab some ice cubes and our topping and I'll be right back. So we've got our ice cubes and our club soda. Let's start filling these drinks. I love using mason jars instead of cups. It's just a little more chic and fun. Don't forget to grab your metal straws as well. And I love that they come in different metallic colors. You can take them anywhere you go. Much more sustainable than the one-time use plastic straws. Don't you agree? Now we're gonna add our floral ginger rose mocktail into the mix here. Mmm, look at that. It's looking lovely. I can't wait to top these off and serve them. Okay, now I'm going to add some edible flowers. I'm gonna use the really pretty big blossoms. I'm going to add some mint leaf in here. It's gonna look like a garden party in a mason jar. It's so fun. And then we are gonna to top it off with some club soda, and this is gonna make it your fizzy mocktail. Kind of like a, oh, you hear that? It's like a champagne drink without the alcohol buzz. It's just fun. Now before we serve up this refreshing, beautiful mocktail, let's bring out the edible garden dessert and the lovely floral edible ice cubes that we're gonna place in a pitcher with some sparkling water. Sounds like a garden party is about to happen. So let's plan and plot our wardrobe. When we come back, we'll show you different ways that you can wear floral. Stay with us. Hawaiian Coffee Body Scrubs Moisturizing Rejuvenating Energizing Sunkissed Alluring Beautiful Handmade in Hawaii with Aloha Coco Java and blossoms flourished all over the catwalks, from surfer girl inspired sport prints to tapestry brocades. The point is, there's a floral for everyone. Let's take a look at how you can wear floral in your ensemble. Now, floral doesn't only mean that you have to wear something covered with a floral print. Take a look at this garden print top. It's just sprinkled with flowers. And with a vibrant color like this, be sure to marry it with a just as bold of a color on the bottom. And what I love about this outfit is the necktie and the flutter sleeves make it very work appropriate for that Pauhana party. And this lively ensemble matches Sarah's spirited personality. We've pulled her hair back, added some tassel earrings, and she's ready to mingle. Thank you, Sarah. 
Now, if you don't have that bold personality to pull off such a vibrant outfit, here's a more dressed down denim version. And everyone's got denim in their closet. Natalie's wearing a high-waisted bootleg denim jean, and we've paired it with a chiffon crop top. And what I love about this crop top is it can show off just a sliver of her suntan. Now, here is where we added the floral in her outfit, in her hair. This is a shower cap turban. And what I love about this turban is that it's made from a silky stretch quick dry fabric so it's comfortable and the lining is a waterproof lining so it'll protect your mane you can wear it in the shower you can wear it at the spa it's made for the sophisticated modern woman it's also one of oprah's favorite and it's a must-have accessory to protect your hair from frizz to protect your blowout and of course if you want to hit that snooze button again like natalie we all know you do go ahead and do that because you might also be fashionably late, right? <laughs> Thank you, Natalie. Now in this next outfit, we'll show you how you can take a non-floral print and make it appropriate for that Aloha dress code event. Tristy here is wearing a strapless chiffon print dress, but notice the print on her dress. It's more of a polka dot leaf print. And here is where we've added some floral adornments. I actually found these roses in the deep, dark depths of my closet in a storage bin. I know you all have some of those, and I know you have them too, I've seen those. <laughs> and I've taken the roses and I've added an elastic band wide enough so that we can slip it over her feet and use it as an ankle strap so it looks like a shoe accessory. Isn't that cute? Now here's another trick. If you have a necklace that's got too many layers for your liking, watch this. We're gonna take her necklace and I'm going to slip it over her head, but I'm going to keep one of the layers behind her neck. And it's gonna create just that little sexy, sassy piece. And that'll keep the front nice and clean, but just adds just a little touch to the back of her neckline, especially when you're wearing a strapless dress. So really chic. And here's where we're gonna add more flowers into her ensemble. This is a lovely preserved rose hair piece. Mm, it still has that scent of a fresh rose, although it's been preserved for I don't know how long. Look at how we've added just that preserved hair piece at the top knot of her hair. And what I love about preserved flowers is you can use them for probably years on end. The fact is you can use them longer than just fresh flowers. Doesn't that look great? It's a nice vintage touch to her outfit. Thank you, Tristy. So we've seen how you can wear floral to a Pauhana party, how you can wear a floral turban on the weekend with denim, how you can even embellish a non-floral print so that you're appropriate for a Aloha dress code party. When we come back, we'll take a look at the garden tea party in full bloom. Stay with us. Luxurious and romantic. Elegant and unique. Modern and stylish. Custom made wearable art forever. Shadorable.
We've made some gorgeous edible desserts with gelatin. We've made some beautiful ice cubes with distilled water. We've even made a mocktail with rose syrup and ginger syrup. And we've taken a look at the many different ways that you can wear floral. So remember, don't just stop and smell the roses. Stop and smell all the beautiful blooms around you. In fact, maybe pick up a few to eat, if they're edible. Until next time, I'm Valerie Joseph with Fashion Sense. Be fabulous, be beautiful, be the best version of you. monk fruit as a sugar substitute. Monk fruit was used for centuries in what? I like to use monk fruit as a sugar substitute. Monk fruit was used for centuries in Eastern herbalism. Hmm. What? Traditional Eastern medicine. Okay, <laughs> herbalism. Okay. Herbalism. Monk fruit was used for centuries in Eastern herbalism. Oh. tucked into our dresser drawers, maybe even tucked into the corners of our closets. Now I'm not referring to those skeletons in your closets, but I'm talking about the familiar comfy old tees. On the next episode of Fashion Sense, I'll be sharing some DIY ideas to repurpose your tees and how to fashionably wear the little white tee. We'll also be making a coconut blueberry cheesecake, guilt free of course, and filling up with antioxidants with a blueberry mint iced tea. All this on the next episode of Fashion Sense by Valerie. Delicate and astonishing. Unique and exotic. Designed with love and aloha. Luxury, floral and styling. J'adore couture.